Hello everyone, it's Nicole Hetty again from Paper Tray Inc. and welcome to another Stamp Affair video. Right now I get the pleasure of introducing you to a new stamp set called Sentimentals that I designed. Um, this set was available in the uh, pre-ordered Stamp Affair kits uh, early release for the folks that ordered those kits and um, it will actually be officially released on September 15th for those of you that are interested in it and pick up the kit. But I wanted to just show you a bit today about how to um, make your own scratch and sniff powders to use with these stamps in order to make some really clever scratch and sniff cards. So first a little bit about these stamps. I designed them so that the portion of the image that you would want to quote unquote smell um, is separate because the way that you use the images is to stamp the portion that's going to be scented uh, in a color first in regular ink and then to stamp a second time over it with the same image only using Versamark ink or an embossing ink and heat embossing with a scratch and sniff embossing powder and the way since these images are separated like that it makes it really easy um, to make certain aspects of them scratch and sniff. So I decided to work with the cherry today to create this little card and the first thing I'm going to do is get to stamping. The cherry first and what I'm going to do is get the leaves here with simply chartreuse ink and I'm going to stamp those right at the top of this block of white cardstock. And then I'm going to get the cherries, the bottom portion. And like I said, these images are separated not only for two step stamping so you can get multiple colors, but also so you can do the scratch and sniff aspect only on the bottom part of the cherries. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp these cherries at the bottom of the stems just like so and I'm going to quickly clean off that stamp because we are going to now uh, do the scratch and sniff portion. We need to make the scratch and sniff powder first and what I have here is clear embossing powder and some cherry sugar free uh, jello mix. Now in the recipe, um, the recipe card you download, it says one teaspoon of the uh, scented powder that you're using with two teaspoons of embossing powder. And that recipe is completely accurate. However, you don't have to make that much if you only want a small quantity. I personally have been using these little um, bead jars that you can buy very inexpensively for a couple dollars for a set of 12. Uh, to hold the embossing powders and then I can put a little label on the top to let me know what's in there because you don't really use a whole lot of embossing powder with each card. Um, before we get to mixing, a little bit about what you can use for scratch and sniff. You can use any powdery substance that does not contain sugar. The reason why you don't want sugar in the um, scented substance is because it will scorch and burn and then it won't smell very good at all. So basically you can use any kind of Kool-Aid, as long as it's sugar-free, Jell-O, uh, pudding mix. Um, you can even use spices like cinnamon, pumpkin pie mix. We have a gingerbread man in the uh, sentimental set that um, you could use with ginger to make him smell like a gingerbread man. Um, you can use cocoa powder, not as in hot chocolate, powdered hot chocolate, but regular baking cocoa powder uh, for the inside portion of the cup to make it smell like cocoa. Um, same goes for um, this Hershey's Kiss in the set. Um, you can literally use just about any powder as long as it doesn't have sugar in it. You can even use ground coffee. So what I'm going to do is two parts. You want to do two parts. Clear embossing powder. So I'm doing two scoops of that to one part of your scented powder, which I am using cherry jello. 
put in this little container and then you just want to stir it up and sometimes I like to go ahead and use the opposite of the end of the spoon to get it mixed up well and you want to make sure that you have it mixed up thoroughly because if you use some of this on your card and only the Kool-Aid or the Jello or whatever sticks to your image and not any of the embossing powder, then it won't stick. You need some of the embossing powder in every application to help everything adhere to your stamped image. So one other thing I want to point out is that, let me clean this off here, is that your powder is going to end up being slightly tinted um, a color depending on what you're using for your powder. So for instance this is slightly pink so I don't think this would necessarily work if I had stamped cherries that were blue or you know an unconventional color. Um, same goes with coffee, um, a lot of your spices, ev everything pretty much has a color so you want to make sure that your image is stamped in a color that will complement what color your embossing powder is going to end up being. So now that I have my embossing powder ready, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a second time with Versamarking. I've got my cherries here. Ink those up with Versamark. And I'm going to line them right up on top of my first impression. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on some of this powder I just made up. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's just a light coating of just like regular embossing powder on there. It just happens to be scented and it happens to have cherry jello mixed in with the clear. Let me go heat this up real quick. Okay, and here I am um, after I've heat embossed and if you can see it in the light just right, it's got just a little bit of a shine to it now and it also has a texture in it that makes it perfect for scratching and sniffing. So I'm going to take a small arrow in the set. These are like my favorite parts of the set. There's four arrows that say scratch and sniff so that the recipient of your card will know that it has a scratch and sniff element on it. This is one of the styles of the arrows. And I'm going to add this right beside the cherries just like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and adhere this to my Pure Poppy card base. Try to make sure it's fairly nice and flat there. I have a strip of Classic Craft cardstock that I'm going to go ahead and adhere on here. It doesn't matter that it's overhanging because I'm going to take care of that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that on well. And then I've got a, each of the um, images in this set has a cute little slightly punny sentiment to coordinate with it. And this one uh, has a ear the cherry on top. And I'm going to go ahead and trim the edges off of this classic craft strip with a knife and a ruler. One last finishing touch I'm going to do is to add some baker's twine to the project. What I'm going to do is I need a piece to go around the top and not actually tie off. So I'm going to run some adhesive along the back here. And I'm going to 
wrap. I want the twine to line up right with the craft strip. I'm going to wrap the ends of the twine around to the back. And then the second piece, I'm going to tie off so they're, that's going to meet in the front. Finish it off in a little bow here. Get everything adjusted. And trim the ends. One last step is I wanted to show you a little trick I like to do especially since we started releasing the uh, pattern packs is I like to cut a piece um, if I've wrapped twine around the inside of my card I like to cut a piece and put it on the inside of the front cover and it kind of covers up everything it makes it look a bit neater so all my mess isn't showing and there is the completed scratch and sniff card.